I might have to travel a hundred million miles Endure the longest journey Face the hardest trials Set out on the highway Jump a speeding train Climb across the mountains To get back home My parents came to the United States from Mexico in 1917 I am one of nine children. We were born on Old Route 66, one block south of here. My, my life as a child, and even today, has always been about music, music, music. Delgadillo Orchestra, six of us traveled for 30 years up and down Route 66 playing for dances. This town died September 22, 1978 at about 2.30 in the afternoon. Statistics has it there was 9,000 traveling this highway every 24 hours Route 66 when it quit raining in the Midwestern states for half a dozen years. The United States built Route 66, started building Route 66, November 1926. They finished building Route 66, 50 miles west of here, in 1938. Then Eisenhower, General Eisenhower, who became President of the United States, <clears throat> was in Germany during World War II, and he says, in America, we need the Autobahn. So they start building the freeways. I believe they start building the freeways in 1965. They finished building the freeway in Williams, Arizona, just 40 miles from here, in 1985. October of 19, they finished building in 84. In October 1985, the United States government said, the inn of Route 66, we now have the super highways, no more Route 66. It was decertified, decommissioned, the signs came down, and uh, we the people we're told that no more Route 66. I'm sitting right here looking at Route 66, a highway from Chicago to Santa Monica, Santa Monica over 2,200 miles long, crossing eight states. The time changed three different times from Chicago to Santa Monica. So we were bypassed September 22nd, 1978, all the traffic went to I-40. We knew that this was going to take place, but we did not know how devastating it was going to be. When they built Route 66, they didn't go through the big, big mountains. They went around the mountains, dips and curves. The traveling public couldn't travel 70 miles an hour. They traveled at 30, 35, 40, 50 for a few miles and then they had to slow down again. So when they opened I-40, this town died for 10 long years. When Interstate opened, we knew that we were gonna get bypassed. But we did not know, we didn't realize that all the traffic was gonna to go to I-40. At first, I was very sad. Then I got very angry at my government. My brother Juan of the world famous snow cap came and got a haircut one day. And he says, Angel, there isn't a sign between Ash Fork, 23 miles west of here, and Flagstaff. 
75 miles was here. There isn't one sign that says Seligman. 60 some miles Seligman, 40 some miles Seligman. You never met my brother Juan. He was a joker. He used to, he used to joke with all the tourists. I says, Juan, you're my brother. I know you. You like the joke. I can't believe what you're telling me. He says, Angel, next time you go to Flagstaff, you'll see there isn't one sign between Flagstaff and Ash Fork, a distance of 50 miles that said Seligman, X number of miles. Sure enough, we had to go to Flagstaff, my wife and I. There wasn't one sign between Flagstaff and Ash Fork that said Seligman, 68 miles Seligman. 40 some miles, Seligman, 30 some miles. In America, this shouldn't have to happen. People don't know what it is to be forgotten, used and abused for 10 long years. 10 long years is a long time. My wife and I raised four children and three of our, three of our children were at NAU University for two years during this period. We didn't have the money to leave. We had to stay and fight, 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 fight. <laughs> the world in general forgot about us. County officials forgot about us. State officials forgot about us. But we humans worldwide are creatures of habit. The traveling public got what they wanted, that fast highway, they didn't see anything. It's just a highway that took them from point A to point B. A highway that would, smooth highway, that would almost put you to sleep. So by the early 1980s, <clears throat> men and women in their 50s, 60s, 70s, they begin to come back into Seligman. The ones that ended up here all told me the same story. Back then, I was still cutting hair and shaving five days a week. Our gift shop was a pool hall. We had three pool tables in a gift shop. Well, these, I call them old people, not young like me. They came in here and they told me the same thing, different people. They all sounded like a recording. They told me, when I was a little boy, when I was a little girl, this has got to be the highway that my parents traveled from the Midwestern states to the land of milk and honey in California. It quit raining in the Midwestern states for half a dozen years. They couldn't feed the cattle, let alone themselves, so a quarter of a million people were looking for a better way to make a living in California. So I heard this over and over, so I said, the traveling public is looking for America of yesterday. For half a dozen years or more, I talked to people, anyone that would listen here on the barber chair, in our pool hall, when I was bicycle up and up and down at the Chamber of Commerce, I said, how we get the economy back? We asked the state to make Route 66 historic from Seligman to Kingman, a distance of 90 miles. But you know what? No one listened. No one thought it, w it was a good idea. The last time that I took it to the Sligman Chamber of Commerce, and by then, I had been president of the Chamber of Commerce for eight years. We had a new, new blood in Sligman. They wanted to be Chamber of Commerce. They wanted to be president. I says, we'll stack the cars, we'll make you president. Well, the last time I took my plan to the Chamber of Commerce, I told them, if you don't like my idea, I'll do it myself. 
I call that now famous meeting for February the 18th, 1987, here in Seligman at the Copper Cart restaurant, which is now a gift shop. Incidentally, we have 14 gift shops in Seligman that sell Route 66 memorabilia. <clears throat> I call that meeting for one o'clock. 15 people came to the meeting. February the 18th, 1987. I did get the Chamber of Commerce to call the first meeting at the Grand Canyon Caverns, February the 8th, 1987. This new president didn't have any interest in Seligman. She just used it for a stepping stone. She didn't go to the meeting. I presided at that meeting. 44 people came to that meeting at the Grand Canyon Caverns. 44 people from as far away as the Grand Canyon Caverns. I presided at the meeting for one hour, nothing happened. We agreed to meet there a month later, same time. I came home, that's when I called that now famous meeting for February the 18th, 1987. I called as many people as, I, as telephone numbers I had, 15 people showed up. Bingo, we formed the historic Route 66 Association of Arizona. We assessed ourselves $10 each. We had elections, I was elected president. Dave Wesson, my first secretary, wrote the letter to the Department of Transportation, asking them, telling them that we had formed an association, that we needed help, that we wanted to make historic Route 66 from Sligan to Kingman. We're still dead. They didn't pay no attention. <laughs> we began to have monthly meetings. And at these monthly meetings, communities from here to Kingman, I mean, from here to the Arizona-California border, 35, 40 people at our meetings. We had the power. We did not give up. We kept on with letters, telephone calls to the Department of Transportation. The Department of Transportation finally acknowledged us and they made Route 66 historic from Seligman to Kingman, November 1987. I have had a lot of time to think. I semi-retired 20 years ago from coming to do barber work. I do barber work now just by request, just for the travelers, none of my customers. I have had a lot of time to think about who I grew up with, eight brothers and sisters, beautiful family, grew up during the, the Depression when we had to fight for every penny, for every nickel, for every dime. We were taught not to give up. So I finally realized what those people down south didn't know about the five people and myself that got together to fight against the state government. What they didn't know is that we six people grew up during the Depression and we did not know what the word no meant. We did not give up. When you fight City Hall, you lose. We had to fight the state and we won because we, the people, have the power. The beautiful thing that has come from that one thought that I had for years is the fact that I have been interviewed over a thousand times by the news media, national and international. A German lady about two weeks ago It was like she got me by the shoulders and shook me like that. I, I, I woke up 100%. I thought giving Route 66 this historic rebirth was beautiful. Saving the town was beautiful. She says, no, the message that you're sending out to the world about you don't give up. This is what the world is receiving from that thought. 
from heaven given realm, six is a historic birth, historic rebirth. She says, that's beautiful, that's awesome. I repeat, like she got me and shook me and says, look what you did here is the message that you're sending out to the world is about believing in yourself and not giving up. Now we have people from all parts of the world coming to travel Route 66. They end up here in our gift shop, in our barber shop. They are all so happy and they all appreciate so much what I have done. I tell them, I, I didn't do it. I just had the idea. It was we, the people, that did it. We, the people, that did it. Dave Wesson, my first secretary, Jerry Richard, my first treasurer, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, from Trucks in Arizona, I forget their name, my brother Juan, the six of us, and all the rest of the people that gave us their support at these meetings taught me that we the people have the power. I lived it. History says that we the people had the power when we overcame in World War II. We weren't prepared for a war, but we became united and we didn't. I lived it then and I lived it when we gave Ralph 66 his historic rebirth. Now Seligman has the distinction of the only town from Chicago to Santa Monica. No other town has the distinction of the little town where Route 66 got its historic rebirth. Not intellect, graduate men and women from our colleges. No, just we, the ordinary everyday people we're the ones that did it. And that is a message that won't quit. People come in here, they wish me years and years of life. Oh gosh, it is so beautiful to be here among all these appreciative, happy, happy people. What doctor can you go to because you're so sad Doctor, I'm so sad, write a prescription so I can be happy. There isn't a doctor in the world that can write your prescription so that you can be happy. And this is what we have done for millions and millions and millions of people. They are so happy to come here. People are coming back that were here 25 years, 10 years, 15 years. They're coming back looking for the business card. They're coming back looking for the license plates that they left here. They take a little and they leave, leave a little. My a German lady, my sister was here two years ago and she left her business card. What year? We'll look it over in the, one of the books there. So there she is looking for her sister's business card. She was here two years ago. So being here among happy, happy, happy people is priceless. It isn't for sale. You can't buy happiness anywhere. It isn't for sale. Either you're happy or you're not. And I just have to reminisce and say it again. The people that come off the bus They're all smiling and so happy. God, makes me the richest man in the world. <laughs> the most important item about people that end up here is I, I saw a big change. John Lasseter, the, produce, the producer of Cars, interviewed me the 12th day of June 2001. Before John Lasseter and introduced me or interviewed me, it was just grown people that traveled Route 66. Since John Lasseter interviewed me and he put his video on the air worldwide, we are now having 
families, national and international, traveling Route 66. They're bringing their children in here. And the most beautiful part about it is that John Lasseter has captured the imagination of the next generation, the young children. I have had mothers, fathers, grandparents, national and international tell me, yes, I have seen that movie, John Lasseter, the movie Animated Cars, with my children or grandchildren. I've sat there and I've seen it 10 or 12 times. The children can't get enough of it. They keep seeing it over and over and over. And that makes me so happy that the next generation is learning about Route 66. That is so important. Route 66 is never going to die. The world wants it. And these young people are inheriting what the history of Route 66 and the history of Route 66 is going to be alive forever. That's what I think. And that's what makes me so happy. That's, that is what is so interesting to me about what we have seen in the last 10, 12 years, families, families, whole families traveling Route 66, learning the history of Route 66, learning that if you don't give up, you can succeed. This is the whole thing in the nutshell. They are learning about don't give up. But our leaders, they're finding out that we the people have the power. In America especially, and in any country, free country, the people have the power. But you have to really believe in yourself. Don't try to fool the elected officials. You can't fool them. You have to be straight. You have to be honest. To stop me coming home again to you After everything that we've been through <sighs> Loving everything that's real and true There is little anyone can do To stop me coming home again